Bioshock 2 is a strange game within the franchise. As time passes, it feels like it has been almost forgotten in comparison to the original hit, which introduced us to Rapture, as well as the City in the Sky third release, Bioshock Infinite. However, in my mind, Bioshock 2 is the perfect sequel. It takes the foundations of the original release and gives us more of the same, both in terms of setting, story and gameplay. With enough changes to make it feel like a compelling step forward for the franchise and a worthwhile gaming experience. Having just completed Bioshock 1 and now Bioshock 2, I want to shine a light on a game I feel has been left to sink to the bottom of the gaming depths. Forgotten and unfairly cast aside when discussing this fantastic franchise. Which of course leads us to the question, why do I think Bioshock 2 is the perfect sequel? And it all begins with the improvements that this game makes over the original release. Bioshock 2 does not redefine the scope or mechanics of the original title. Instead, it looks to improve them based on review and player feedback, to create a more cohesive package and thus a more enjoyable gameplay loop. The most notable improvement is around plasmids and weapons. In the original game, you had to swap between your powers and more traditional weaponry during combat, creating this clunky back and forth, not so in the sequel. Each of these combat options is now tied to the player's hand, your right hand for weaponry and your left hand for the more fantastic and diverse plasmids. This is a fantastic change as combat feels more fluid allowing you to combine plasmid and weaponry together to devastating effect. It's a simple change granted, but it is a fundamental improvement over the original, letting combat shine through even more as you try and find the perfect plasmid and weapon combination. And this improvement to combat is also seen in the research system. No longer must you take a photo of an enemy breaking this combat flow, instead, Bioshock 2 introduces a recording system that rewards you for combat diversity. This mechanic has you begin rolling some film and then records your interactions versus that enemy. The interesting change here is that you're rewarded for changing up your approach. The more enemies you kill on film in different ways, the more research XP you are given toward that enemy and eventual buffs will follow. It's a super simple change, but it again stops the breaking of combat and encourages, which is the most important part to this change in my mind, it encourages variety via rewarding gameplay buffs. There have also been tweaks to the hacking system, which if I'm being honest, I was somewhat on the fence about. The hacking system in the original Bioshock felt like a mini game of sorts. However, being truthful, it did grow stale after a few hours. Instead of trying to add variety to this mechanic, Bioshock 2 does away with it and introduces timed skill checks. A much simplified and less interesting mechanic in my opinion, but vastly more user friendly and more enjoyable over the long haul of the game. But let's talk more major changes and one of the key improvements from Bioshock 1 is the role of the big daddy. At the tail end of Bioshock 1, the player becomes a big daddy to push forward the narrative and exploration. However, while this was a nice story pivot, nothing really changed. You didn't get the, the cool weaponry of the big daddy nor the feel, but not so in this underwater sequel. Bioshock 2 sees you take on the role of the original big daddy, more on this later when we discuss story. However, it's the gameplay improvements which made me love this narrative and functional decision. You are given all the tools of a big daddy, the drill, the rivet gun, the machine gun, and later more varied weapons of hulking destruction. Bioshock 1 may have put you in the oversized shoes of a big daddy, but Bioshock 2 makes you feel and play like one, and it's a welcome and engaging gameplay decision. And with this decision, there is an impact on Little Sisters. The way in which you can choose to interact with them fits perfectly into the expected narrative. The mechanic of harvest or save still exists, but the change here is that before making this choice, you have the option to guide a little sister to some dead residence and harvest Adam from them. 
This is a simple system. You place the little sister on your shoulder and she leads you to an angel. Once there, you can place the little sister on the ground and she'll begin to harvest the atom for you. As per the Bioshock lore though, this draws in the addicted and desperate, creating a sort of mini horde mechanic. As enemies rush at you and the little sister, should she die, you fail. The mechanic is simple and it doesn't change much throughout the course of the game, but these fights often happen in very open areas and result in a lot of spinning plates, weapon use and plasmid variety. As you try and lay traps, slow down the approaching enemies and pick those off who have made it too close. It is a welcome additional and fully optional way to obtain Adam that ties perfectly into the game's lore and your role as a big daddy. Don't get me wrong, there are a bunch of other smaller improvements, but the last one that I want to mention is also a perfect segue into story, and that's Big Sisters. In the original game, Big Daddies were the scary opponent. However, over time, they lost a little bit of their mystique. As you, the player, got stronger and more confident, you hunted these enemies down. They no longer felt like a threat but a fun gameplay challenge to overcome and then either save or harvest the little sister they protected. And while there are still big daddies in this sunken sequel, as you now yourself are a big daddy, the scariness of these foes has again gone down. In steps the big sister to take their place. Big sisters are an interesting lore concept, they are grown up little sisters who have gone insane over time. They have this fantastic erratic movement, almost like ballerinas as they dance around the map trying to kill you. What I loved about these, aside from their connection to the lore of Rapture, was how they appeared. During normal gameplay, exploration, doing a mission, killing enemies, you would get this piercing audio cue, informing you that a big sister was hunting you. This gave you roughly 30 seconds to prepare, laying down traps or perhaps moving to more advantageous or appropriate ground. These almost felt like mini events as they came out of the blue and caused you to quickly change your focus. On top of that, Due to the inability to hunt these big sisters, it kept that feeling of a difficult encounter. As you were the hunted one, you were quite literally the big daddy in this scenario. And of course, as I mentioned, these big sisters are a perfect segue into the next topic of this video, story. When referencing the story of Bioshock 2, we must first address the elephant in the room, the twist from the original Bioshock, would you kindly. It is a memorable moment of this game, and outside of seeing Rapture for the first time, it is rightly or wrongly what we remember about the overall narrative and pacing of Bioshock. It was the moment that the rug was pulled out from under us, which doesn't mean the rest of the game was bad or forgettable, however this moment stands tall in not just Bioshock but video game storytelling. Bioshock 2 serves no twist like this. As such, it stops the franchise from having only one storytelling card up its sleeve and lets it focus on a wider and overarching narrative and set of motives. The problem here, the elephant in the room that I mentioned, is that the twist in Bioshock 1 was so memorable, it overshadowed the rest of the brilliant storytelling. Thus, Bioshock 2 is often, in my mind, unfairly compared to this moment, when in fact, if we compared the overall pacing, narrative, story and dialogue, we'd see that Bioshock 2 does in fact deliver a compelling tale for the player to follow. And this tale all begins with the game's main antagonist, Sophia Lamb. Lamb is a clinical psychiatrist and has filled the power vacuum and rapture left by Andrew Ryan's death. A nice nod to the original game's story progression. Lamb was first brought to rapture by Ryan to aid the people. However, her views of altruism clashed with Ryan and he feared the growing influence she had over what he saw as his citizens. 
Ryan planted a spy in her ranks, Stanley Poole. He was able to gather evidence of wrongdoing, slight wrongdoing, which led to Lamb's arrest and incarceration in the Persephone penal colony, along with many of her followers. It's a convenient reason as to why her presence was not felt in the original game, but it does play well into the character of Andrew Ryan and the internal feuds Rapture faced on a daily basis. How this all ties to you, the player, is via Sophia Lamb's daughter, Eleanor. You see, when her mother was in prison, Eleanor found evidence that Stanley Poole was involved as well as other dubious deeds he committed. She confronted him as a young child and threatened to tell her mother, which, as you can imagine, went badly. Poole organised for Eleanor to be kidnapped and sold to the Little Sisters Orphanage, where she was eventually paired to Subject Delta, you. This in the narrative sense draws an instant connection with you and Eleanor, and when Sophia Lamb escapes from prison after the death of Ryan and Fontaine from the franchise's opening title, she finds her daughter, rescued her, and through the use of mind control plasmids, has Subject Delta end his own life. This is where the intriguing story of your journey in Rapture and your connection to Eleanor comes into play. Some 10 years after your death, you are resurrected at a Vita Chamber, thanks to the help of several little sisters. Due to this powerful connection between you, the Big Daddy, and Eleanor, the little sister, you are thrust into the story of lies, deceit, and power as you try and uncover the truth of your current existence and ultimately find the one you share the closest bond with. Bioshock 2 is a true story of rapture. It's how little sisters came to be, their connection to Big Daddies and the greed of those who call this underwater city home. I also think that Bioshock 2 does a great job of introducing the player to their own character over the course of the narrative. You were originally nicknamed Johnny Topside by the locals. You were a diver who found rapture on your own. However, through paranoia and distrust, Andrew Ryan believed you to be a spy and had you kidnapped forced into the Big Daddy program, becoming the first paired Big Daddy with a little sister. This further ties into the narrative of distrust and explains why Sophia Lamb hates you so much. Despite the inaccuracies to her story, she believes that you are part of the reason her daughter was taken from her and thus aims to stop you from reaching Eleanor at any cost unwilling to risk you renewing this bond that you and her daughter share. Throughout the narrative, the story is drip-fed to you. If that I've explained unfolds over the course of the main path, pulling back the curtain of rapture with every side character you meet and audio log you find. It results in an overall compelling experience. You want to understand who you are, what you are, and how this situation came to be. The question you ask yourself as the player are also asked by the main character, putting you in this situation of pushing forward to learn more, to uncover the truth of Rapture. And while, as I mentioned, there is no twist, the rug is never pulled from under you, I thought that Bioshock 2 did at least introduce a more interesting ending based on your choice of actions. For example, your choice to kill or leave a side character, and of course, how you treated the little sisters. This more intriguing ending is done via the narrative link between you, the player, and Eleanor. Throughout your journey, Eleanor is tracking you. She is watching what you're doing, feeling what you're feeling through the link you share, and how you act, it influences her personality. In my playthrough, thinking nothing of it, I decided to do the exact opposite of what I did in Bioshock 1. I chose to harvest almost all of the little sisters. To understand the difference in playstyles, I thought it would maybe change an end video and, and that was it. But I was wrong. 
The developers used this link between Eleanor and you to alter the final stage of the game. As I was cruel, I killed side characters and I harvested little sisters, Eleanor also became cruel. Her voice lines changed, her demeanour changed. She didn't care about those around her, even the other little sisters, and saw them as a tool to make her stronger. She was a darker version of herself because of what she saw me do. I completely forgot about this change in my recent playthrough. I genuinely gasped at my ending as I realised I had created a monster. I felt like I made the wrong choices, but these were my wrong choices to make. I wouldn't call this a twist, and to be honest with you, I don't believe you would notice it if you performed good actions, but I found it a well done response to my actions as a player, even if I didn't like the outcome. And then, of course, Rapture, or rather, more Rapture, is a perfect way to endear fans to this sequel. I spoke at great lengths about my love of Rapture in my Bioshock 1 video, and Bioshock 2 has delivered more of this great city, which is a major boon to players like me who want to see, explore and learn more about this underwater utopia falling into ruin. I loved exploring the new areas on offer, seeing a wider variety of Rapture. Siren Alley, Fontaine Futuristics, Dionysus Park, they all had that feel of rapture, but introduced me to new environments, audio tapes and, simply put, more of this underwater world that continues to capture my imagination. I also thought it was a wonderful touch by the devs to let us go outside and explore the ocean depths. These moments were exciting as you got to see Rapture from a completely different perspective and travel the road less trodden as a hulking big daddy. The exploration of Rapture was further aided by a fantastic little sister level, a wonderful insight into how these children view the world around them, a welcome respite from the crumbling and flooded ruins around you, while also giving a greater understanding of the little sisters, how they operate and how they view Rapture. The reason why, in my mind, Bioshock 2 is a great sequel is also part of the reason it didn't get the media attention the original or infinite got, and that's because it was simply more Bioshock. It was more rapture, more underwater utopia gone wrong storylines, more little sisters, more audio logs, more plasmids and more weapons. It was Bioshock with improvements and a different story. It brought some new mechanics to the game, yes, and it improved many others, but ultimately it delivered an experience that was familiar. This can put people off, they want the next thing, the evolution of the formula. I just wanted more Bioshock. It delivered a need for me, a reason to revisit Rapture, experience a new story, play the game in a different way, and leave with a further understanding of the world and its ultimate downfall. All of this to me makes Bioshock 2 a perfect sequel. It allowed me to revisit one of my favourite game locations and experience it in a new way while ensuring that the gameplay I loved from the original was present and improved upon. Sometimes games reinvent themselves too much between releases and lose themselves along the way. Bioshock 2 never fell victim to this, for better or for worse, but to me, this made it perfect.